it's your time. You know, a lot of times we go through different things for an extended period of time, and we wonder, is it ever going to, are we ever going to get over this thing? Is it ever going to get back to the way it was? You see, God knows where you're at today. It may not be a place of pleasure. Maybe you want to see more. Maybe you want to see your situation change. But did you know that there comes a time in your life where God turns things around, where God helps you? Do you want to have her take her, let them go to the nursery if you want, if, if, if they, if, no, I'm not, no, I didn't say him. No, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say, no, I, no, he's fine. I, uh, feel free to show them if they need a place. But, uh, no, your, your little one, no, it's gone. You know what? It's good to see you. you get, they make it fall from there. Why don't someone help them to the nursery? It's good to see your, hey, you got an apartment, didn't you? So you're moving in. It was good to see your little one uh, here. God bless you. Thank you. And, um, but our message is it's your time. You know, there comes a time at the end of the day where God wants to give you a breakthrough. God wants to help you. There comes a time at the end of the day where God wants to speak to you. You know, I was reading in the book of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah is known as a prophet that spoke to situations and, and spoke to things that were undesirable conditions, but God used them. The, 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 you might have heard of Jeremiah 29, 11. Many of us have, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're not plans to harm you, but they're plans to prosper you. They're plans to help you. But did you know that this verse has some context? Did you know that this verse is actually a letter? Did you know that this verse comes from a, a major prophet in the scriptures? that, um, that uh, many times we overlook. Listen, I want to read, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the context. Here's what was happening. The children of Israel was going through a difficult time. They were raised to follow God. They were raised to do God's will. But after a while, they kind of fell out. They kind of went their own way. They kind of did their own thing. Then after a while, what happened is, is, is that, that they kind of uh, got out of touch with God. And God wanted to help them get back to him. You see, God was interested in getting people to their destiny. God knew that if the children of Israel would have kept going their same direction, they would not have found. They would not have arrived. They wouldn't have got to where they intended to be. So I want to read a, a, script, a few scriptures, I guess, here. I guess I'll do it now. It's your time. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. Verse 11 says it this way. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They're plans to prosper you and to not harm you. They're plans to give you hope and a future. Verse 12 says it this way. When you will call on me, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Once again, Right before this, the children of God were being corrected. Actually, this whole uh, chapter is about the children of God. It's about God trying to get them back to himself. And he writes a letter. He has the prophets write a letter and says, listen, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have some difficult times for 70 years. But at the end of 70 years, I want you to kind of get back to where you're supposed to be. I don't want you to pretend that you're in captivity all your life. 
And matter of fact, even before that, here's what the letter says in the scriptures before that. It says, during these seven years, I want you to prosper. During these seven years, when I send you into Babylon, you know, a lot of times we think that it was the Babylonians, it was their great idea to bring the children of God captive. No, it wasn't. It was God's idea. You see, God removed his protection over his people because of their disobedience. And what happened was that the nations around him came and uh, uh, caused them and took them into exile. Did you know that God many times corrects his people? And I'm going to just have to say this point because I want to move on. But did you know that God corrects those he loves? It's not something popular today, I know. We don't want to believe that God would correct his people. As a matter of fact, you know what God said to the prophet? He said, listen, my people are going to try to get you to say it's only going to last 20 years, 10 years. But he says, don't believe the pastors or the prophets. They're lying to you. That's what he said in the scripture. He says, listen, in the verses before this, he says, you're not going to get out of it. He says, listen, You've wandered away from me, you've done your own thing, and there's a 70-year punishment. Now, once again, none of us like that. None of us even want to believe that, but it's true. As a matter of fact, that's why it's so important to live right today, because you don't want to have to go into exile. What do you mean by that? You don't want to have to learn the hard way, do you? We've learned the hard way enough. I've learned the hard way enough. I've decided that I'm tired of being disciplined by the Lord. I'm a child of God. You're a child of God. And our Father disciplines us. Our Father corrects us. Why? Because when we go astray, we're going to miss what God has for us. We're going to go away. God said, listen, I'm going to correct you for a time, but I'm going to correct you because I love you. And I'm going to get you back at the end of the day, back to where you need to be. So listen, God is not a, a mean God. God's a loving God. God has always a plan for you. God is always a purpose for you. God is always looking to get you back to where you need to be. So listen, before I move on to this point, as I said a moment ago, that's why it's so important for you and I to fear God. We don't fear God today. We think that we could shake our fists before God, do what I want, or just go do what I want, and we could get by with it. Yeah, you could get by with it, but eventually God's going to see that you strayed so far that he's going to say, listen, you're my son, my daughter. You've been dedicated to me. Your parents prayed for me. You're a child of most I got, and I'm not going to let you go down that path. And listen, and to get you back many times, he's going to have to correct you. Many times he's going to have to allow you to have pain. But you know, even in the midst when they were in exile, once again, God said, I want you to marry. I want you to build houses. The verses before this. I want you to pray for those people that are lording over you. The Babylonians. Because if they do well, if the Babylonians do well, the ones that are over you, then that means you do well. So he says, pray for the city you're in. And you know what happened? The, the Israelites, at every time that they were in bondage, even in, when the Pharaoh had them, they multiplied in number. God rescued them. Listen, God is always going to rescue his people because he loves you. You know, at the end of the day, you know about the Babylonians, and, and I am going to move on. I've said it now three times. But did you know that after this came to an end, God punished the Babylonians for hurting his people. It was God's idea to bring them into exile for the Babylonians to come and to bring his correction. God uses our enemies to bring correction in our life. He does. God uses things that we don't like. That's why he says we've got to submit to government authorities. We don't like it to get the speeding ticket, but we don't like it. To, but God says we're supposed to because God uses those in authority. Okay, now I got to get on. None of us like that, of course, but let's move on here. It's your time. What do you mean by that though, pastor? You see, this was a letter and God said all this in a letter, but then he said, there's coming a time where 70 years is up. And that's what we're talking about this morning. 
We're talking about the good stuff. He says, listen, you could talk all you want, but it's going to be 70 years. But you know, I read in several commentaries, it really wasn't actually seven years. They had good time, uh, uh, state good time. Some of us know, me and Bob know about, uh, and they had federal good time. No, we don't. Uh, but you know what? It was actually, it was, uh, some of you didn't get that. Don't you, we don't want you to get it. It was, it was 58 years, actually, they say, many of them say that the scholars or commentaries that they were 58 years. But he says, you could do whatever you want. You could jump up and down all you want. It's going to be this amount of time. But here's what happens. He says, this is what, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you. And that's what God is saying to you today. God is visiting you, and some of you don't know it. Some of you are too locked up in yesterday, the pain of yesterday, you're not willing to go on. You're not willing to dream again. You're not willing to say that, God, you're not willing to step up to the, you're not willing to date again. Whoa, now I'm hitting home. You're not willing to fill out another application because you know what? It hasn't worked out yesterday. You see, yesterday, it was good. God blessed you in this period of time. God was with you. You got a promotion. You even saved some money. God worked with you. God began to cleanse you. God began to work in you. It was tough times. Some of you have been through some tough times in your life. You know what I'm talking about. You've been in that wilderness experience. But now you're coming out of it. Now is your time. Could you imagine in this verse, and this is the verse talking about the end of the letter, could you imagine God comes to him and says, now, man, I want to get you back to where you need to be. Could you imagine the children of God saying, no, I'm happy here. I became the mayor. I like it in Babylon. I, it's, it's pretty good here. You know, I built the house. I'm running the corner store. That's all good. But God had greater plans for them. God had some new things he wanted to do. And God wanted to get them. And that's where these scriptures are. Okay. What is the, when 70 years are completed, here's what I want to say. Your sentence has been completed. Oh, I, I know, but this is the scripture. This is Old Testament. But some of you are living like, like you're still being punished for something that happened yesterday. No, this wasn't even punishment. This was God trying to refine them. But then there's a completion. Just like there's 70 years, there's a, coming to the end of those 70 years. And that's what God was saying. I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to these places. There's just three quick things that I saw here. There was a set time. We talked about that. There was a set time, no matter how you look at it. And there's a set time. Some, sometimes we call it college. For some, it's four years. Going to college, you feel like it's your Babylon. For some, it's, it's a period of getting to where you work up the ladder, whatever it may be in your company. You're trying to save some money. There's set periods of times we just can't get over. Sometimes you got to accept it. And that's what Jeremiah told him. You got to accept it, man. I don't care if they preach all these sermons that you're going to get out of it tomorrow. It's not going to happen. It's going to be a set period of time. But the same way is there's coming to an end of that. And that's what, once again, that he was trying to say. There was a set period of time. Also, there was a set promise. Did you know that God has a promise for you in your life? Just because you've been wandering for a few years doesn't mean that God forgot about that promise in your life. Just because you've gone through some things and some people hated on you, some people did you wrong, doesn't mean that that promise is no longer there. Just because you went through a valley. It doesn't mean that God has forgot about that promise when you are dedicated to the Lord, when you've given your life to the Lord. You see, listen, God has you in the palm of his hand. God, you're, you're Israel today. You're the Jewish folk. What do you mean? You've been blood bought. You've been bought into the church. You are God's redeemed. You are the nation of Israel today, the modern day. That's who you are. Who are these people? Who, are, who is Israel today? Is it the Jewish folks? Yeah, that's, there's true. That they're, they're there. I believe that. But you know who the real people of God are? 
anyone who confesses Jesus Christ as Lord and have their sins washed. Listen, I honor the Jewish people. They're great people. But you know, you know who, and, they, and I believe that there's a favor on them. I believe there's a touch of God. It's scriptural. As a matter of fact, it says that we're supposed to be nice to them. And if, and if they're blessed, that the world gets blessed. I really believe that. But did you know the real people of God, though, though they're the people of God, are people that confesses that Jesus, Lord, you've done that. Or if, if not, after the service, we're going to give you an opportunity. But listen, so that means you have the blessing of God in your life. That means you have the favor of God in your life. What do you mean by that? You have the promise. You know what? I believe in the Abrahamic promise. Did you know that promise is for you? What do you mean? I just thought it was for Israel. Baloney. It's for you. What do you mean, pastor? Because God has chosen. You are, Paul said it, you are the chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And some of you are living underneath that covenant this morning because you've been corrected. You felt like God has looked away from you. You've been in your Babylon. Things haven't gone like you should have. But God wants you to understand that that promise is still there. What do you mean by that? I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They're plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I said a moment ago, there is a set promise that God has for you. And the devil is here so often trying to discourage you to think that that promise is invalid today. Listen, if they would have redreamed the dreams all they wanted during that seven years, it may not have happened the way they thought. They could have dreamt some dreams that sure it would have gone good for them while they're there. But let's say they had a dream that they wanted to build a home in their motherland or whatever it may be or, 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 or get back to there. It wasn't going to happen. But in the same token, at one point, God says, now pray the prayer again. It is going to happen. And here's what I want to say to you this morning. Are you willing to take God at his word and pray that prayer again? Are you willing to say, God, use me? God, I love you. Here's what he says. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Does that mean that God didn't listen to them before when they felt like they were out of touch, out of tune? Some of you, we know how that is. We go through seasons of dry periods. But no, that's not what happened. God says, now listen, if you call on me this time, I'm going to hear you and I'm going to answer it. Can you ask God for that thing one more time? God, give me that wife. Give me that husband you promised me. God, take away that husband. No, 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 we're not going to do take away husbands. Away. Stop there. Because God was going to answer your prayer. He, your prayers are anointed now. God, give me that job. Oh, pastor, I prayed that so many times. Yeah, but that was the 69th year. Now, there's a new anointing over your life. There's a new favor over your life. You see, they could have, Jesus, when he was born, he was born. They waited 400 years. They could have talked all about it at 300 years, but it wasn't going to happen. Listen, then there was 400 years of silence and Jesus was born. Here's what I wanted to say. It's your time, my brother, my sister. God has you here this morning because he wants to speak to you. God wants you to know that it's your time, that he wants you to call upon him again. That he wants you to ask him again. This time you're going to be surprised. What do you mean? This time it's going to work. And all hell can come against you. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if all demons in hell try to stop. Listen, God is more powerful than the attack of the enemy. Here we go. Then you will call on me and pray to me and I will listen. There comes a time, no matter what, at the right time, there's a breakthrough. Some of you are going to be shocked at the season you're coming into. And you could pray a small prayer or you could pray a big prayer. Listen, I, I say take advantage. You pay, you've served the time. And I'm saying that metaphorically. You, you understand what I'm getting at. I'm giving you the, the Old Testament story. 
for you. It might have been you just you you said something bad to your boss and you got fired and you had to learn the lesson the hard way. And now, you know, you wandered for a while, but now, you know, you're, you're, you're back and, and things. Now God wants to promote you into another level. So I'm not talking about 70 years, this, it may be a month, it may be a week. As a matter of fact, did you know when we sin? Some of us don't like this, but it's true. I got to be a, a proper minister of the gospel. You know when we sin, many times, you know, God, he forgives us, but he gives it a few days, many times. And maybe it's us, I don't know. But maybe until things begin to be cleansed a little bit. Meaning, we could go do our own thing. But eventually we need to come back to God and begin to live the life that he's called us to be. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Here's what he says. Here's the benefit now. Here is being on the other side. He says, I'm going to answer this time. I'm going to answer. And this time when you seek me, you're going to find me. You find God at this stage. He's going to break forth some things that you never thought were possible. Listen, I'm asking you this morning to understand that if God before you, who dare be against you? You say, but pastor, I've heard this message before. I understand that. But maybe there was a holding pattern. Maybe there was a waiting. You were in the waiting room. Maybe God was cleansing you or speaking, getting you ready. But now you're entering a season where God wants to get you there, to bring you back. And it would be so easy for you to live your life in those things of yesterday, of hopelessness, of despair, of being ruled by other things. You see, God always wanted you to be dominant. What do you mean, Pastor? That's, where, that's right. God always wanted his children to be dominant. He wanted the people of God to be people that ruled and reigned. And quickly as we close here, it's your time. What do you mean? There was a set plan. There was a set purpose. And all I know is everything you've gone through in the past, the, the hardship, the valley, everything you've gone through had its purpose to it. And now it's not something just doing your time or, 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 or that job. No, no, no. It's a platform that God is building on. That God is somehow getting, you know, the other day I was, I was driving my car and, you know, I'm getting a little older uh, these days. And I found myself, you know, it seems like I drive slower these days, unless I'm in a hurry. And, and I'm there and I'm, I'm with John Dave and I remember my own days when I got a ticket here. I got a ticket there, a speeding ticket, trying to rush here, leaving late. Now, I, I found myself coming back from Home Depot going 10 miles an hour. If you're behind me, you, yeah, you were honk honking your arm. And, you know, I was enjoying it. I was thinking, why? why? Why do those stupid same things? Why not learn from the past and be a little smarter? Okay, then when they yelled at me and got behind me and I got an argument. No, that's not true. But here's what I want to say. God uses those things that we've learned from to somehow project and get us. Your pain is something that God is using to open up a new door for you. What you've gone through is something that God is going to use to get you to where you need to be. And I'm asking you to believe again. I'm asking you to somehow understand, I know the plans. He says, listen, I understand, but these verses were after the 70 years and they were saying, it's going to come to an end. So you say, pastor, but I feel like I'm only in the three quarters. I'm, I'm still in it. So this is not applicable to me. Well, if that's, you feel that this morning, okay. But as I said a moment ago, let's say you say, well, I'm still being corrected. I'm still learning of God and I'm, I'm, I'm not there at that breakthrough. But you can look forward to it. You're, you're going to get there. So stay in it, the fire. Keep learning. Keep, keep coming to church. Keep praying. And you know what God says? He says, I'm going to bless you even in the midst of the storm. He says, I'm going to bless you where you're at. He says, so he says, Yes, it's going to be a greater blessing over here. But even if you're in the midst of an unpleasant season, I'm still going to do some great things in your life. You're going to get your degree. You're going to have some breakthrough. I'm going to train you. 
And then there is a set period of time. And I want to say that there's a coming in your life where you're at there today where, where all the enemy is going to try to hold you back. They try to hold Jesus back from being born. And he was born and the earth has never been the same. Here's what I'm going to say. The enemy is not going to be able to hold back what God shoots forth in your life. The enemy is going to try, but there's going to be such a breakthrough anointing. And it's not that you deserve it, but you paid the price. You, you, you came to church. You try to be nice to that person. Okay, then the next week you weren't that nice. But you try to live right. You try to get your life in order. You try to serve God again. And then you cross your Rubicon. You and now, God, everything is preparation for the advancement that he has for you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You say, hey, but how is this going to happen? Here's what I want to say. Do it wholeheartedly. Do it wholeheartedly. He says, when you seek me with all your heart, you're going to find me. Here's what I want to say. If you want to find God's best for you, don't be melancholy about it. Don't say, oh, I'm going to go to the bar one day and maybe come to church every six weeks or, or I'm going to do that. Or, you hear what I'm saying? Somehow have a heart that you know that God is the right way. You're tired of playing around with this. You're tired of playing. You're tired of doing time stupidly. You've wasted enough. I don't know. I've wasted uh, enough years of my life. I, I, I don't want the devil to be a part of anything. I want all God in it. Why? Because this is the place to live. This is the place for the blessing and bountiful of God. I want doors to open on Monday. Then I want another door to open Tuesday. Then Wednesday come around. I want a miracle. Listen, God can do it for you. God, can, listen, God is all powerful. God, is, listen, if not you, who? And I'm done. Listen, if not you, who? Some Jewish, and I'm, oh, so, I, I, you, I, what I'm saying, you are the people of God. If not you, God is interested in blessing you. If not you own that business, who? If not you being the next one, who? If not this little kid here that I had, who? I remember when he was born. Listen, I'm believing that he's going to be, I'm going to work for him one day. No, will he hire me? Are you with me? I want you to dream big. Know that God loves you. Your past is over. God has a plan for you. I want you to go forward. When you go out of here, be looking for those miracles. Be looking for what he has for you. Close your eyes. Father, we love you. We love you. We honor you. We thank you. God, we're so very thankful for you being our God and our Savior. I'm looking, Lord, at a chosen generate, a royal priesthood. Bless your people, we pray. We'll be dismissed just in two minutes. But listen, is there someone here that would say, I need God. I need his help. Is there someone here that says, hey, pastor, I feel like I'm still wandering a little bit and I need God to help me. If that's you, if you need God's help, raise your hand. No one looking around. Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's pray this prayer together, can we? Dear Jesus, I love you. I need you. Please forgive me. Come into my life. Forgive me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless your people, we pray. Bless the fellowship. God, bless the lunch. Lord, give your people a great week. Help them, we pray. Work in their life. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand together for the benediction.